Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session where I get to talk to you a little bit about, you know, it's it, this is a little bit of an advanced topic because we want to extend, you know, the utilization and the understanding of RESTful API, especially on the consumer side, but also on the server side. Uh, let me just tell you a story here and, and kind of give you like kind of the the scope of this video and what we're really trying to do here. Uh, let's just assume together, you know, have you ever been trying to develop a RESTful API and you find yourself in a situation where the standard of RISTful API doesn't really support what you're trying to do. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a RISTful API that basically generates barcodes, right? So one of the methods that you could use when you're making a RISTful API is to basically do a post, right, where you basically are adding a barcode, right? You're adding a barcode into your system. That's a barcode that you're providing in order for you to be able to kind of make it available for other people okay well if you have a get a get call and you go and say api barcodes that puts you in a position where you are retrieving existing barcodes these are systems or, or barcodes or records that are already there you could go further and you say well i want a barcode with a particular id but still if you want to get everything that would be your your way maybe you want to update a barcode so I guess your 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 call would be something like this some people would go and say put the ID in addition to the body but that's fine you know some people will do it this way as well if you want to delete a barcode well let's fix that if you want to delete a barcode what happens right you want to go and say API slash barcodes slash ID but what if you want to generate a barcode. So you want to go to the system and tell the system generate a random barcode for me. Which HTTP method are you going to be using to support that little endeavor of yours? Right? Engineers find themselves in that corner where they basically say, well, it's probably a post, it's probably a get. Right? Let me try to do a get, let me try to do a post. And then they find themselves kind of between a rock and a hard place there because it doesn't syntactically make sense what is being accomplished here. If you do a get, you're assuming the resource already exists. If you're doing a post, you're assuming that you're providing providing the content. So let's go back to the originals, the origins of, of HTTP standard, how HTTP standard works, and what did the folks that are standardizing HTTP said. In here, it talks about method definitions, and it says, you know, that method definitions is a set of methods for HTTP 1.1 is defined below. Although this set can be expanded, additional method cannot be assumed to share the same semantics for separately extended clients and servers. What I mean by that is that this, the folks that um, uh, developed the standards around this are basically saying, hey, you know, you can assume that you can you can create customized methods beyond the get and the post and the and the put and all that, but do not expect the the, the the extended clients and servers to know what these methods are. And that's fair. That's a fair deal, right? Because you're basically saying, you know, how are they supposed to know beyond the CRUD operations what you are doing with your API? But for the most part, when you're developing APIs and servers, you are in some sort of communication with your customers or clients or consumers if the consumers are not exactly you, right? So you are the build the person that's building the API most of the time, almost 80% of the time. The people who are building the back end are the people who are building the front end because not all the organizations are like 100,000 people that can actually distribute the work this way. And if that's the case, so that's one case, you are your own client, you are the provider and the consumer. And if your client is someone that you are in communication with, whether you are physically actually meeting with them or communicating with them through documentation, you need to provide documentation for your APIs. So that leaves only one group of people that you probably don't want to communicate with your APIs. And it doesn't really matter whether they, they know your customized HTTP methods or not. If you are good this far, if you understand that premise and you understand that far, let me show you how you can actually extend your HTTP um, methods and HTTP client calls and your API calls in the simplest way possible. I'm going to go ahead in here and create a quick uh, API project for you. So here is, here is ASP.NET Core Web API. And let's just say REST 
three demo API. Right, configure, whatever, all of that is great. We're gonna create just a really simple API and then I'm gonna show you what, what we can do here. I'm gonna show you the hard way first and then I'm gonna show you the easy way. So you have both options. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and create a controller. I'm gonna go to API. I'm gonna say create an empty controller. I'm gonna call it home controller. Good, so that's your home controller. And then we're just gonna go and say here's an HTTP git and maybe AI will help out, of course it will. So that's AI here jumping in and saying, hey, let me write that, you know, that kind of demo for you. Okay, great, control KE will clean up the stuff in your code. Let's go ahead and run and run this API call. So this is just a simple git. I'm basically doing a git and I'm saying, hey, here's a git. Here you go, execute, and it says, welcome to REST 3 demo API, whatever, right? So far, so good. Now that doesn't work for me. Let's just say I want a different, a different verb, a different method, you know, instead of the get and the post. Like if you do and go HTTP, you'll see head options, patch, post, put, and then there's logging, and then there's HTTP method. And hang in there because I'm going to show you what you can do. If you go and do this, it's not going to work out for you. It's going to freak out, right? So there is a hard way and there is an easy way. Let's talk about the hard way. This is for the people that don't want to add any external or third party libraries. You don't always have that capacity or option to do something like that. So I'm just going to create a class and I'm going to call it custom HTTP method that inherits from HTTP method attribute. Of course, your friend here, the APR friend here, has basically just generated the whole thing for us. So if I go here and say, bring in the references we can call this custom and i'm going to keep it custom so you understand that this is not something outside of the box right check this out i'm going to take this i'm going to put it in here i'm going to throw this away i'm just going to do some some work around here so basically whatever whatever method so this is http method whatever that method is is what i'm going to use up here so http custom http method and it will take custom, that's whatever I want it to be, to be the communication call that I want to make here. Okay, so far so good. Okay, let's run this guy again. Ah, you can see here that this guy now is freaking out because the swagger uh, standardization is unable to catch up with this idea yet. There's still work in progress. I've seen some uh, talks on GitHub, but it's still work in progress. You're not gonna find that supported outside a box. But let me show you what happens here now. I'm gonna try to start a, let's start here a brand new um, instance of RESTful, uh, sorry, um, Postman, right? Here's Postman. Here you go. Here's Postman. So this is the call that we're having. API slash home, right? That's the call. If I do a git on that guy, it's not going to give me anything. But if I go up here and type in custom and hit enter, still not going to work out. Why is that? The API running. What did I call it? Custom. That's true. And it has a git. Uh, disable SSL certification. There you go. And you can see here, this is working, right? If I go to back to Git, just so you understand that it's not actually not working. Here you go, Git, not working. And then it saves your options here and it says custom, welcome to RESTful API. Works like a charm. That's the hard way of doing it because if you have 50 APIs that you want to support this idea, you're gonna have to go and write this piece of code over and over and over again. Or even worse, you create a local um, a NuGet library that gets distributed in your company or the factory or whatever crap people do these days and then it loses support so it's probably better to put it in some open source project because it's not domain specific okay now let me show you the easy way of doing this you can basically now navigate to uh, nuget.org and you can basically look for restful sense restful sense is a library that we created specifically for that there's the version 3.0 this library has over a quarter million downloads so can't be wrong. I'm going to download this library now. Here you go. There we go. And then we can now go up in here and do the exact same thing, except that uh, uh, 
what did I call it? That's a good question. <laughs> so we just implemented this. So let's see, RESTful since. I literally just created the PR for this. So here you go. Here's a closed PR with the examples. I think I called it HTTP custom. That's what it is, HTTP custom. So that's your HTTP call. And then I'm going to call it custom here. It's just as simple as that. You get the library and you do HTTP custom, it'll do that a little trick for you. And then if it, there's any upgrades or anything like that, it's a huge standard community that will help you do something like that. Let's make sure it actually works. Let's go and run this. This guy's not working as we're expecting it not to. I'm going to run this and still works. And you can call this now whatever you want, right? You don't call it generate code. You don't call it, call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter, right? Okay, so that's that's the client side. Sorry, that's the server side. What about the client side? How do I consume this API endpoint and do the serialization and all the, do all that fun stuff? Let's start a new project here. And let's call this project uh, REST demo. It's a console application. REST 3 demo. We did the API. We're going to do the client now this time. So do not use top levels. Yes, please don't. Again, I'm going to show you the easy way and the hard way of doing this. <coughs> and hopefully you'll find this uh, simple. So let's just go ahead here and just create an HTTP client. Okay, so that's my HTTP client, right? And then in that HTTP client, I want to go ahead and basically let's set up the base address. The base address here would be this address that we have here. So that's that local host guy. Okay, and then HTTP client that send send async that send async is the guy that's gonna t let you kind of make that customized goal here it is so you basically create an HTTP request message continue with that's some hacky way of doing a a callback here you go so there's your method we need a new method here right so I'm gonna say HTTP HTTP method equal new HTTP method, but this time it's called custom, just like that. Okay, so that's your HTTP custom, and then here it's API slash home. So whatever comes back from this guy is basically the HTTP response, like that, right? HTTP response message, that's what it is. Here you go. And then we want to basically serialize that guy, basically read it as a stream. We also want to turn this main method into a task. And then here's console, right, not, right line, HTTP response dot read um, request message dot, not the request message, I'll tell you. This is the response and it has content, there you go, and then read as string async. So basically you're going to read the response from that API call that we made and we try to print that out. Let's just make sure that the API is actually running here. It's not running, so let's get that guy running. There you go. And then let's run this guy. Here you go. Welcome to REST 3 demo. That's the hard way of doing it, right? What's the easy way of doing it? Because you still have to do serialization and all that kind of stuff. You could do it also with RESTful Sense if you basically go and say, here is here's a library, here is a RESTful Sense, RESTful Sense 3. This is also available for WebAssembly, so if you're working with Blazor Hybrid or Blazor Client Side and all that, all these methods are already there. That was my fun project this weekend. So, okay, so there's this guy, and then I'm going to go and say HTTP RESTful HTTP client, so new RESTful API client, there you go, and then that RESTful, RESTful API client dot, uh, let's set a base address, same thing, what was our base address here, it was, uh, if you don't know this trick about copying things you copied before, it's Windows V, Windows V will pop up all the things that you copied before, it's a pretty good tool. It's not enabled by default, so now you know. So okay, so there is full API client, and then we want to do a send, send HTTP request like that, right? And that HTTP request will have API slash home like that, and it needs to be a weighted string uh, response 
await like that. Right, and here is your customized method, so watch this. This guy has different requests though. It has a method, so it's custom, so that's your method. Right, and it also has the relative URL, relative URL. So that's API slash home, like that. And why is this guy mad? It says no overload, takes two arguments. There's something else that it wants. It wants our cancellation token. In this case, there's nothing really, so I'm just going to put it to null. What else it wants? It wants to the type arguments method cancellation token func string cannot be inferred. You just need me to tell you this is a string. Okay, cool. Uh, cancellation token. Sure, new cancellation to however you create a new cancellation to whatever makes you happy. Okay, so this guy would give me the response, right? And then I want to basically just print that out. So right line response. Let's see if that works. I haven't actually tried it with a string before. I tried it with with actual models. Uh, send requests, and this guy will respond with something. So what if I keep it like that? Ha, huh. okay, I need a model to make this work. It doesn't support the string, just the raw string yet. This is like maybe something for the standard community to look into, but let's do that real quick. Class, student, student with an ID. I'm gonna return here a new student. There is an ID equals one, and this is still custom. This is returning student like that. Okay, uh, action result, uh, non-generic type. Yeah, it needs to be action result like that. There you go, so it's action result. And just to test that one one more time, just to make sure that it actually does what we think it's doing. If I do that, it should return the student. Yeah, there you go, works great. Let's go back here. Let's do this. Public class student with an ID that's an integer. Okay, so now I'm going to put that student as inferred type in here, and that response would be the student, and that response will be that ID. Does that work? Let's find out. There you go. So now it printed out a model that's mapped this way. Why is that important? Why do, you, why do you need to create something like that? Because it's not always clear, like from a, from a front end customer standpoint, it doesn't make any difference. Even if you make all your calls puts, even if you actually make a, if you mean a post, right? Even if you make all your calls delete when you're actually internally, but because we, we aim towards standardization, like a real high quality engineering, Right, it's really important that your API's methods make sense. And because it doesn't necessarily violate the standardization for you to extend these, it even adds more security for you. Like it adds more security because it's not easy to guess now what's actually your endpoints are doing, especially when it comes to reads and doing something something specific like that. Uh, just for people that are um, uh, looking to learn more about this, look at the code. This is the code that we changed. It's an open source library called Restful Sense. This is how it gives you an example of how you do things. Um, I hope you find this a little bit useful, interesting. I hope you find this uh, something that you can use and increase the quality of your um, uh, API development You know, using something like that. There's still a hold on having Swagger documents support custom HTTP method. There's still a back and forth. There's a huge conversation in the GitHub community. Um, it's not a showstopper though. Like the the world is not going to end if we can't produce Swagger documents. You know that support custom HTTP methods. We can use whatever we want to provide that kind of con uh, documentation. Other than that, uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Again, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. 
please drop a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to take a look at the um, uh, the uh, foundations, the nonprofit foundations that we support through this channel, and uh, you know uh, donate if you have uh, the capacity to donate to help people everywhere. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.